Well, hello, combat crew, and welcome to a DIY video by me, Anthony, from Bizarrely Funny. We got a mask to make today. This is Reptile's Mask from MK1 New Game by Parton Prince. And now I can say this with the, the utmost confidence. This is a DIY that is the easiest to do in the world. If you buy this from Parton Print and he uses this filament, which is already green, to make a burlap-like pattern that you don't have to sand because look at it. What is the track and what is supposed to be the burlap stitching? You can't tell. The only thing I might have to do is sand the very edge where you can tell that the filament has been detached. But that's sandpaper for a few seconds on the edges. Or you can dremel it like a psychopath. If you had one of these, you could just go around there like that for one second or so and go, and then, then and that's done. $25, he has donated this for this video and I thank you very much, Barton Print, for doing that so that we have a reptile mask that fits on your face like this. Interior stuff, straps, pads. That's about all you need to do for the DIY portion of this, and everybody that has any kind of strap. This one right here, you can buy like 200 feet of it for $10. It's like, it's ridiculously cheap. You just get a strap like that, cut it in length. You probably want to go like this and go, huh, that's about it. Glue the ends in, one of those. You get at the dollar store. What I was going to do though, is I was gonna grunge it some. If you're gonna do anything, you're gonna weather it. Because the rule is, with texturing or grunge effects, the worse you do, the better it looks. Uh, I'm gonna do an acrylic wash. So I've got some, got some black acrylic in this much water. What it is, is it's a really thinned out shadowing. What's happening is the, the black is left over after the water evaporates. The water allows the black to settle in all the pits and recesses that you couldn't really otherwise get to with a brush. Critic wash is what's used in model making. Like if it's a very small truck you're trying to paint or like an engine or something, you'll do an acrylic wash and it'll settle and look, make all the pipes and tubes and stuff like that look more realistic. So that's what we're gonna do for the first time on the outside of this. We don't have to go crazy here. This is a DIY that makes you feel comfortable. You wanna sit back and relax. Unless you're looking at my room. Look how much stuff is in here with me. Look at this stuff. I have so much stuff. I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. If you're not distracted by all the Easter eggs in this room, <laughs> then we can just go right ahead and open the black paint that is uh, welded shut. And usually it is when it's old. And then we're gonna get some on our hands. And it's gonna stay there for about a week. And we're gonna dip the brush in here like that. And that would be too much black if we just went straight to the surface of the mask to do any kind of grunge effects with. Unless you were like really fast. I'm trying to wipe it off again, and that would be very stressful. So instead, we're gonna just put it in the water, and we're gonna mix it around and make the water look all cloudy. It's like a brown, black water now. It's very watery. Not that much black, it's, it's just slightly translucent if you would hold this in the light. I'm very not precise on things, and you might have noticed that. This is a fan brush. Uh, by the way, so I'm gonna put some mileage on this. This is very small. <laughs> You've got a big surface and a very small brush. You're just gonna kind of go over the areas like that. You're kind of, you see what's happening there? You're putting, you're putting the water in all these places and it thinly will sit in them. And after the water evaporates, it will leave the black left behind in little tiny little tiny fractions and they will darken up and more realistically depict a burlap material. By the way, you can heat gun any 3D kind of printed material to change its shape. So if it's too big, which this slightly is, if I wanted to bring this, the edges in, I would gently warm the inside of this until it became malleable and then I would kind of bend it into my cheekbones. So this is what we kind of have going right now. It will not, it will sparingly dry. It will not dry like in a crazy way. So you can kind of reapply, you can do it multiple times, but you do have to wait for it to dry. See how it's looking a little bit more shadowy now? It doesn't look as flat. And so what we're gonna do now 
and that we kind of have it to where we want it to dry. We're gonna take a heat gun like this, which we don't really need to. We can use a hair dryer if we wanted. We just need it to dry faster than I have. You know, I don't have any patience. So we're just gonna facilitate the drying. Once it stops shining and it stops being wet, it will be dry paint-wise, so it shouldn't actually take as long as like a rustoleum or something, Krylon, to dry. You would have to wait 24 hours. Not this. So you can see right now uh, how it's kind of starting to look. It's darkening as in like an overall thing. You kind of get this texturing stuff start to happen, but you know what I feel like? I need to step it up, so I'm going to add a little bit more. Just to show you how extreme of a difference I just made a commitment to do, I put another brush full of black in it so that it's really, you can really see it. You can do that. You don't even need to paint this, honestly. You can just leave it alone. It's already textured. It's already the right color it's supposed to be. You literally just strap it up, put it on. Balloon, splash, splish, splish, splish. Sping, splash, spew. How about that? How about that? I kind of got it to where I'm, I'm like, this is good. The drying part is literally under 10 minutes of time with direct air contact. So if I don't like it, I can immediately address that. But you can kind of tell the difference here in tone from A, B, not that much. I went bananas last round, and it still doesn't look that extremely different because of the water dilution. So what we're gonna do now is continue to use the heat gun to form this to my face better, because look at that play. Even with pads, that's too much. Two, on the gun, and uh, we're doing it on the inside. Now you can kind of give a little bit of pressure with your fingers, fingers and thumb. When it's warm enough, it'll start giving way. It'll start to kind of let go, and your fingers will start getting closer together. Normally, I would torch this, like with a blowtorch, to make it go really, really fast, but I'm doing it safe way this time. I'm trying to do it even as possible. You don't want one area to get particularly hot and the other to stay cool because it will become lopsided. One side will, go, will draw to your face, and the other side won't move. Okay, we're gonna try and mallet. Woo, it's toasty in here. Toasty! So this is where I want it to be. It would be so much easier to quench this. You dunk it in water right after this. Cold water, not ice water, but cold water. And then it's done and it stays that way. But this I have to wait. Which way do you blow? That way? Cheating. Thicker ones, you kind of the heat has to go and permeate through to the other side slightly. Because if the face is cool and the back is hot, when you move it, the front wants to stay rigid and stay where it was, and you start to separate those bands from each other. So you kinda of need it to be uniformly heated like I was kinda of doing. Alright. Now, now it fits like this. You see what I'm saying? So before I had all that play room, and now it's gone. Strap time, it's time to get some straps on. Strap, why might went none? So, we're gonna change out our heat gun. Okay, for the glue gun, boom. Now we gotta prime this for about five minutes. And we gotta figure out our length of, uh, length of strap. And then with something this wide, it's easy with the mask like this to determine where your top strap is going to go and where your bottom one is. Sometimes a mask will end like that or like way up here. It'll be very, very sharp and it's really hard to determine where to put the second strap. This now fits too well and it might muffle me. So I might actually have to put a pad in here just to pull it away from my face a little bit so that uh, you can hear reptile speak. That is going to be top strap. And bottom strap. Like that. Right here. About. These are very forgiving. Hot glue kind of sucks. 
different temperatures allow it to kind of stretch and open and close again and so hot glue tends to let go sometimes what we're going to do is we're going to score the placement some i got a little box cutter right here and i'm going to score this like a hashtag symbol you want a texture for the glue to grab into more than like a smooth surface and we don't want to go like with the track lines because you'll just split the mask and it's a stupid idea we're kind of going we're kind of going against those and hashtagging the other way. So we're gonna put the glue glops on and then we're gonna put the strap on the glue glop. We're gonna put the bead of glue in this spot right here. Boom. That is old. That is yellowish. Glue glop. You can reinforce it as well by going over the top because sometimes the glue will let go of the strap and not the mask. So we're gonna go over the top of the glue glop to hold the strap itself in place. And we got a little Spider-Man spillovers that happen all the time. The mask kind of sits far back, like toward the ear. So there's a, the strap looks small, but it is, it's fine. So there's one. Yeah, one is kind of in there. That glue needs more time. Oh, what are these? No. And these ones don't sweep up, they go straight out. The, the one that goes on the top, I, you kind of angle it a little bit with the mask sweep up. On the bottom strap, you want it to go uh, where your neck is, so you, you don't want to do the up sweep, you want to kind of go either straight or down. I'm gonna lock it in. Lock it in. Good old trusty rather stripping. We're gonna use this instead. Hey, there's a sewing needle in here. Go across the bottom of the chin. Let's go about that far. About that far. Push it in. Two squares. And in the nose, we wanted to touch the bridge of the nose, like a like a pair of glasses. You want it to sit there-ish. You want it to sit here about to catch the nose. So what do you think about that? How does that sound? Top airflow and bottom airflow. You step out. So that's how you do it, combat crew. That's how you make a reptile mask for yourself from Part and Print. Go get one today. It's only $25-ish. Or, or maybe that's more. I don't remember. I've been reptile, and I hope that you like the mask. And I hope you love the game as much as we do. Go check out Part and Print for any of the other masks he carries. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. And click the bell icon to get notified when we make things, whatever that's going to be. I've been Reptile. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>